Welcome back to my tutorials on professional writing. This one teaches you about tone. Remember you can use the pause button as needed. The view you see here includes everything you'll be learning about professional documents in this course. There are other tutorials that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style will be effective in a specific situation. So although your primary interest in this tutorial is the tone of the message itself, effective tone can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. I should say that I'm going to focus on addressing an audience from Western cultures. They place a high value on efficiency. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, especially the one on audience, you should. All right, this tutorial focuses on one area of style in professional writing, tone, by which I mean attitude. You may have heard about tone before, but my goal is to get you thinking about its impact in a business context and to explain specific techniques for achieving an appropriate attitude in your own writing. We'll be considering the style of an email update. The update was sent by the CEO of a financial services company called TIAA CREF. I've revised the original somewhat to make it more useful for our purposes here. The quality in this video makes it impossible for you to read the email. I've placed a copy on our course website if you'd like to. When you think about the audience for this email, you should realize they're customers and they have varying levels of expertise on financial investing. The readers are also skeptical of or sensitive to the writer's message about their investments. This email was written when investment performance was weak. All of this means the writer has to increase the reader's readiness to accept his message in the update. My task in this tutorial is to explain the four ways to create a positive impression with your attitude by choosing the most effective style for your readers and your message. I also intend to persuade you that creating a positive impression is important in this email update. All right. Formality is the first area of tone you need to manage to convey an appropriate professional attitude. Levels of formality can be thought of on a continuum from highly formal, that'd be academic-like, to highly informal, what we might call conversational. Professionals from Western cultures typically expect a balanced rather than highly formal or highly informal tone. Consider this sentence from the CEO's email update. Where would you place this example on the formality continuum? I'd say it's somewhere near the highly formal end. It does sound very academic, right? Now consider a revised version of that sentence. Several aspects of the revised sentence create a more balanced level of formality. Note the writer replaced many of those highly formal words with less formal alternatives, like downtimes instead of periods of suboptimal performance. The revised version includes the personal pronoun you, which also achieves a more business-like and less formal tone than the original version of the sentence. Tone is the impression that a text conveys about the writer's attitude. For a Western audience, the impression created by the highly formal style of the original sentence is that the CEO is above his or her readers or customers. That impression will not help the writer effectively achieve his goal of informing and reassuring customers their money is important to the company. Now, reader orientation is the second aspect of tone you must manage. Like the other aspects of tone, levels of reader orientation can be thought of on a continuum. From highly focused on the reader to highly focused on someone or something else. The default choice for successful professionals is to focus as much on the Western reader as possible in both the content of the message and the structure of the individual sentences. So consider this sentence from the CEO's email. Where would you place it on a continuum? Well, I think it's clear it's not highly focused on the reader. 
Perhaps that'll be more clear when you consider an alternate revised version of that sentence. Where would you place this example? Well, I think it's clear the revised sentence achieves more focus on the reader, mostly because of the use of second-person pronouns like you and your. Addressing the reader directly through those pronouns also achieves a less formal tone than in the original sentence. The attitude conveyed by the style of the revised sentence is that the CEO is talking in a friendly way to customers. This impression should help the writer effectively achieve his goals of reassuring his customers that the company cares about their money. But now consider the sentence shown here. The use of second person pronouns in this example creates an uncaring attitude toward the reader. We can call that a lack of reader orientation. The example on the previous screen conveyed a positive message whereas the one on this screen conveys a negative one, one which most readers will be at least somewhat sensitive to. The impression created in the original version here is that the CEO has no interest in the reader's feelings about the decline in their income. I want you to compare the impression conveyed by the revised sentence in which the CEO addresses readers generally by using investors and they rather than personally with you. Note that the writer conveys the same sensitive content but achieves a tone that's more reader oriented. The writer more effectively achieves his goal of reassuring customers that their feelings matter to the company and therefore their money does too. Directness, especially in requests, is the third aspect of tone you must manage. Directness like formality and reader orientation can be best measured on a continuum, highly direct to highly indirect. Successful professionals match their level of directness to the level of sensitivity of their audience toward their request. There are three specific questions that could guide a writer's thinking about reader sensitivity. All right, to demonstrate, let's consider the original sentence shown here. First question, how much does the CEO's request in this specific sentence impose on customers? I'd say telling others about the company would not be a tremendous imposition for most Western readers. Second question, how well does the CEO know the readers? Well, the answer here is probably not at all. They're strangers. Third question, how much power does the CEO have over the readers? The answer is not much. In fact, it might be more appropriate to say the readers have power over the CEO because they're the customers with the money and they can choose to invest it where they want. Thinking through these questions means that the CEO's request here is moderately heavy. Stated another way, the readers are moderately sensitive to the request he's making. And because of that sensitivity, the CEO's highly direct imperative request in this original sentence conveys an ineffective attitude of authority. Now, compare the attitude conveyed by the revised sentence, which represents an indirect version of the very same message. The writer used two indirectness strategies. The if clause is an uncertainty marker, and please is a deference marker. These help to make the revised sentence convey an appropriate level of authority in this situation. Of course, there are other indirectness strategies, like framing requests as questions, that you can use to manage your tone. Presupposition is the final aspect of tone you should manage. Presupposition triggers convey the writer's judgment about truth or values. They result in tone problems when the reader disagrees with the writer's judgments. So that means successful professionals increase the reader's readiness to accept their message by avoiding those kind of a disagreements. All right, this, this will be more clear if we look at the example shown in the original sentence here. It contains the main verb is. 
that's a factive verb, which means that it presupposes the truth or fact in the claim. What's the claim here? That the economy is improving. If readers don't agree with that claim, and there are likely to be quite a few who were feeling the economic consequences of a weak economy at the time of this message, then they are somewhat sensitive to this message. The impression that this leaves is that the CEO disagrees with those customers. Now compare that to the revised sentence, which contains the main verb appears. That's a non-factive verb, so it doesn't presuppose the truth of the claim. So in the revision, the impression is that the CEO is not certain about the claim, so there could be no strong disagreement with any of the readers. For the ones who are sensitive to the claim, the revised sentence conveys a less argumentative attitude. That means it'll be more helpful in achieving the CEO's goals of reassuring customers their money's important to the company. Dealing with reader sensitivity requires more words. The successful professional chooses the level of conciseness that matches the level of audience sensitivity. All right, now it's time to check your understanding of tone. You're going to revise a sentence you haven't seen before. More specifically, the question asks that you revise to enhance reader orientation. Pause the recording to review this sentence from a letter to a customer. Before you set about revising, you need to determine if the writer's message is either negative or positive from the reader's perspective. I think we can all agree that getting money back is something readers are going to react positively to. So what should be emphasized here in this positive message? Currently, it's the purchase price of the stereo because that's what appears near the front of the sentence so that's what gets the focus but making the reader the focus would actually be better and the way to do that is to get the reader into the subject slot of the sentence that's easy to accomplish and it's what you see in the revised version here To help you understand how to manage the four aspects of tone, I've been referring to an email from a CEO of a financial services company to the company's customers. The customers are more likely to be ready to accept his reassurance that their money's in good hands if he can achieve an appropriate tone. Tone ensures the effectiveness of his message by conveying a positive impression of his attitude. In contrast to most aspects of style, Changes in tone are often significant when considering just a single word or phrase. You know, think about the change from you to investors in the CEO's email to customers. That means the cumulative effect of several changes is absolutely critical when you consider their impact within an entire document. Successful professionals accurately predict the reaction of their readers and they make strategic choices to manage the attitude that they convey. That means they can achieve a business-like tone that's personal and also professional. They can manipulate content and sentence structure to achieve reader orientation, whether their message is positive or negative. They can choose the level of directness that's appropriate for their purpose and audience, and they can avoid presuppositions that will differ from their readers. Before I end this tutorial on tone, it's important to remind you I've assumed an audience of people from Western cultures. There's no aspect of professional writing that's more highly influenced by culture than tone. After all, conveying an appropriate attitude toward others is culturally determined. For example, the same level of directness in a routine request is likely to convey a competent attitude to your boss from Germany but a rude attitude to the one from Japan. And, of course, individuals from a single culture are not all identical. This is all further evidence that successful professional writers adapt, in other words, strategically manage their style, based on their knowledge of their audience. 
the key is to know what your reader values and then convey your message with a tone that respects those values.